Good morning, everybody. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in on Sunday. So we really appreciate you hanging out with us, coming to hear the Word of God, coming to hear some good news. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue our sermon series this morning entitled Hope Remains. It's on the book of Psalms, and I've been, I mean, the book of Psalms, and I've been, ex- I've been so excited to just study it out, uh, to, to learn from God's Word. And it's just been an incredible journey, um, understanding it more, diving deeper into it, you know, we had an Ohana group uh, this past Wednesday, and the exercise that we did, I just said, hey guys, I, I, I want you guys to come with your favorite psalm, uh, or a psalm that's relevant to you right now. And it was really cool. Uh, everybody in the group shared, um, and they were all able to share a psalm that was meaningful to them, or it meant a lot, or was their favorite. And for me, it was so encouraging because I felt like the psalm was almost speaking for that person in their situation, you know? And we asked ourselves the question after people had shared, we were like, why are the psalms even in the Bible? Why are they there, right? Um, It's interesting because they're not not letters to a church, right? Um, They are not historical recounting of events. Uh, they're not, it's not a letter to a, a certain person necessarily. Um, why are the Psalms in the Bible? And the Psalms are songs and poems. Uh, they were music. Uh, they had a cadence to it, a rhythm. Sometimes they rhymed in the original Hebrew language. And uh, the Psalms are so special because they, they're not... They're not meant to necessarily inform us. They're meant to move us. And as I heard everybody share their psalm, it was almost like, you know, you, you had like a favorite song growing up and, and like that song had lyrics on it and you were like, that's my jam. That's like my life right now. You know what I'm saying? Like any Taylor Swift song pretty much, like if you're in high school. You know, I'm just kidding. But that was, it's almost like describing my life, right? And sometimes songs have the ability to put into words what we may not be able to. They have this uncanny ability to express people's hearts. And that is what's so special about the Psalms, is that they are, it's almost like we get to take a little bit of a sneak peek into someone's personal journal. And in the Psalms, the audience is not a person, it's not a church, the audience is God himself. The writers of the Psalms, they, they, they wrote to God, they sang to God in praise and lament and worry and fear. And that's why they're so incredible is that when you read the Psalms, you can always find yourself in the Psalms. Whatever emotion you may be feeling, you can find yourself in the Psalms. And so as we read the Psalms, I want to encourage you guys to study them out and have a newfound maybe respect or, or admiration or love for them because at the end of the day, what the Psalms communicate to us is that hope still remains. That throughout all of our problems, throughout all of our worries and troubles, that at the end of the day, we have hope in God. And that's what we wanna have, amen? So today we're gonna, we're gonna, do, uh, we're gonna do an exercise and uh, I'd like you to, if you're watching with someone, I want you to turn to each other right now and I want you to look them right in the eye. I want you to look them square in the eye and I want you to say this to him. I am a sheep. All right, and before you even do anything else, the other person, I want you to reply back to them without breaking any eye contact. I want you to say the same thing. I want you to go, I want you to say, I also am a sheep. Okay, and I, I, I want us to, and then, and then you can bah afterwards. Bah, no, I'm playing, don't do that. You don't have to do that. Um, I want us to keep that in mind, and that's the title of our time this morning. I want us to keep that in mind as we read what is possibly the most famous passage of Scripture in all of the Bible. You see it in bookmarks. You see it it plastered on walls. You see it on posters. It's people's backgrounds. And everybody knows this Scripture, even if you aren't a Christian or if you haven't gone to church. And it is in Psalm 23. We're going to be looking at that this morning. I want you to turn your Bibles, please, to Psalm 23. It's only six verses long, 
And yet in these short six verses, David describes God with such depth and power that entire books of theology could not even begin to touch it. And in these verses we're about to read, David tells us truths about what God mean, means to him, about what God meant to him, and how God and what God can mean to you and me today. Psalm 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I lack nothing. Here is one of the most important biblical truths. The Lord is my shepherd. Shepherd, And until we understand that simple truth, nothing else in Scripture makes any difference to us. Why? Because look how David words this statement. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He's not a shepherd. He's not the shepherd. And he's not necessarily even your shepherd. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Just as much as he belonged to the Lord, he had the audacity and the security to claim that the God of the universe belonged to him and that he was his. And so if David says that the Lord of his shepherd, what does that make David? What does that imply about David? Well, it makes him a sheep, right? It makes him a sheep. And I thought about this and I was like, I mean, don't you think David could have come up with some other comparison or some other illustration about God or who God was to him. I mean, he could definitely have said, the Lord is my commander and I am his warrior, right? That would have been nice. That would have been kind of cool. I like that one. Or the Lord is my music notes. He's my inspiration and I am his singer. That's kind of nice too. Music is fun. Or, or maybe, maybe he could have said, the Lord is my king and I am his ambassador. That would have been cool. Because everyone respects a warrior when they walk through the door. Everyone listens when the singer starts to perform and everyone pays attention when the ambassador has something important to say, but who cares about a sheep? Who would notice when a sheep turns up? There's nobody that cares about a sheep. Only one person notices a sheep and that's the shepherd. And this is exactly David's point and I find this amazing because he knew what it meant to be a warrior, right? David knew. He knew what it meant to be a king, eventually. He knew what it meant to be a musician. He knew what it meant to be a messenger. But when David wants to find the perfect illustration for God out of all those things, he calls God a shepherd. The Lord cared for David. David remembered the amount of care he took for every one of his sheep, how he stayed by their side day and night, protecting them from danger and, and harm, and the way he cared about his sheep reminded him of the way that God cared for, for him. The God that David loved, loved him back. And there was no better way to describe the Lord's role in his life than a shepherd. And in doing so, David proudly implied that he was a sheep. So what do we know about sheep? Well, if you've ever heard a lesson on anything about a shepherd or a sheep, you're going to know a couple things. Sheep, one, sheep are dumb. Sheep are really dumb, like stupid dumb. Uh, they're not, they're just not smart. There, there's some, there's some smart animals in the world, like a lot of animals. I can't, I'm not even going to name them off, but sheep are definitely not one of them. <laughs> uh, they're not smart. They're dumb. Second, they're really dirty. They can't clean themselves. A lot of animals have like a cleaning mechanism. My bunny rabbit like goes like, you know, he cleans himself, like licks some stuff. Like cats can do that too. Sheep, they don't know how to do that. They just get dirty. Wherever, whatever that happens to them, happens to them. They can't do anything about it. They're dirty. Lastly, sheep are defenseless. A lot of other animals can defend themselves. Dogs, cats, Many animals can defend themselves, but a sheep cannot defend itself. It is just prone to attack. It is just prone to getting eaten all the time. And unless a shepherd is there, unless someone's there to protect it, it's, it's going to die. Sheep are dirty, they're dumb, and, and they're defenseless. You know, I uh, went golfing with my dad and my brother um, uh, like a, maybe a week and a half ago, um, and me and my brother bought um, a round of golf, like nine holes actually, for my dad for Father's Day. And we went to, it's called the Hawaii Country Club. And I'm sorry if anybody from the Hawaii Country Club's watching, but it's like, 
It's a really cheap golf course. Sorry, Dad, it's what we could afford at the time. And, um, you know, when you golf, you, uh, at the beginning of a hole, you usually, depending on how far it is, you take out the driver, right? Especially as a man, you wanna take out the driver because it's bigger and it's, you can whack it, the ball farther, right? Common, there you go, common sense. And I know that whenever I try to use the driver, it's like almost as tall as me, I'm short. It's like super long. And I don't know how, I look really clumsy swinging a driver and every time I hit it, I never really hit it super cleanly. It always like hucks or it, or it, uh, or it shanks or I just don't do a very good job. There's one club that I do pretty well with and it's the seven iron, it's nice and short and uh, I have control over it. And I, I remember, um, getting the driver out, and I remember uh, the first time I did this past, uh, past time I went golfing, and I tried to swing at the, at the ball, and I shanked it or something like that. It didn't go where I wanted it to go, and my dad kind of looks at me, and he goes, Nick, what was that, what was that club that, you, um, that you're good with, <laughs> that you like to hit with? And I was like, <clears throat> seven iron? And he was like, why don't, you, why don't you practice with that? Why don't you just practice with that one? And in my mind, I was like, <clears throat> You know, I was like, mm, yeah, whatever. Yeah, for sure. I can do that. And uh, yeah, whatever. And I think for me, like in the moment, <laughs> when it came to being corrected, when it came to getting advice, I think I didn't want to listen at first. I wanted to show off and use the driver because I thought I'd look cool. And I think most of us can be the same way. I think we just want too much show too much stubbornness, too much independence, too much self-reliance. I don't need advice. <sniffs> ah, hooked it, dang it. Uh, I, can handle my, I can handle this myself. Mm, I missed it. I don't need a shepherd. I, I don't need a shepherd. I can do this by myself. And you know, I think we'd all like to say or think that for sure when times are tough, we'll put more faith, more trust, more surrender, and we'll listen more to God to what he would want for our life, to where he's trying to lead us, but unfortunately that's not always the case. Why is that? Because we're sheep. Because we're sheep. What's the point? You and I need the shepherd more today than ever. And if we can understand that biblical truth, that the Lord is my shepherd, it will open up all of scripture to you. And the end of verse 1 of Psalm 23 will make so much more sense. And it won't just be some words on a piece of paper, but it will be an unwavering truth for your life, anchored in your, in your very soul. In the end of verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. David says, I lack nothing. Other translations say, I shall not want I have everything right here in my shepherd. I have everything that I need because the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. There's nothing more that I could want. You couldn't tell me my life could be any better than it is right now because in the presence of my shepherd, I am fully content. Wow. Wow. Can you say that about your life? That you lack nothing? That just knowing the simple truth that you have Jesus is enough for you in your life. Because for me, <laughs> it's really easy to have and to sink into a, a Jesus plus mentality. Like Jesus plus a new car, that'd be awesome, right? Because mine's beat up. Or like Jesus plus a vacation, because you know your boy could use some time off right now, right? Or Jesus plus a bigger house, because we need more amenities and a guest room and a baby room, and I need Jesus plus the newest iPhone, because man, if I don't have that, then I'm behind. I need Jesus plus even my health. And hear me when I say this, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be careful when I'm talking about health. We shouldn't be careful or we shouldn't be wise or that we should run into the streets with no mask on or something like that. But, but hear me out. Don't let anyone steal the comfort, the security, the peace, the joy, the goodness, and the love that you have because of the shepherd. Do not let the devil, do not let the world, do not let the flesh steal the contentment, the purity, and the simplicity of your relationship with God. Don't let anyone or anything try to fool you that you need something more or something else or someone else in your life. 
You don't need more money. You don't need more success. You don't need another relationship. You don't need more of anything else. You just need more of Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. I shall not want. You can take all the rest of that stuff, right? We don't need it. Just give me Jesus. Just give me my shepherd. And that's all I'll need. Incredibly convicting and inspiring. Three words. <laughs> because the Lord will lead you and he will guide you and he cares for you. He adores you. He wants nothing more to take than to take care of his sheep. And, and that's exactly what he does. He takes care of us. David says in verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside quiet waters. Ah. <sighs> I mean, that sounds pretty nice. I don't know about you. That sounds nice, doesn't it? I mean, I think all of us would love to lie down on some green pastures and be led to some quiet waters right about now. And, and when, I, uh, when you think of the word green pastures, what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind when you think of green pastures? Maybe it's like Switzerland or Ireland because whenever I see pictures of that place or those places, it's like lush 24-7 for some reason. I don't know. It's, it's like, <laughs> this looks amazing. For me, I think of actually, I think of the big island. Um, if you've ever taken that drive from Hilo to Kona or, or Kona to Hilo and you take in that saddle road, it's like, I, it's my favorite drive in the entire world. It is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I go and I'm like, where am I right now? <laughs> it's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. There are rolling hills. It's green. And it's, it's green pastures. That's what I think of when I think of green pastures. I want to show you a, a quick picture of the wilderness in the Mediterranean. Okay, I'm gonna show the picture. This is, this is called the wilderness. But in the Bible, this is also called green pastures. It's very surprising, I know. And as, I mean, as Western people who may have never experienced the Middle East before, we can take a look at this and go like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, I just see a bunch of rocks, dude. That's, uh, it's real rocky. Uh, I need a nice bed of grass to lay my blanket on and lay my head on. I'm not gonna lay my head on some rocks, thank you very much. Where are the rolling hills? Where is the green? I, I don't see any of that. Well, for the shepherd and the sheep in the Middle East, that's, these are green pastures. Why? Because if you, if you looked, there was like tiny little pockets of green amongst all the rocks, right? And those are, that's alfalfa. That alfalfa is, which is what sheep eat, they only grow in very small amounts on the side of rocks um, and only in places where there is a little bit of wind and a little bit of moisture. And so this tiny bit of moisture and wind from the Mediterranean, it condenses and it drips onto the sides of these rocks and you get little, little tufts of green. And that's what the Bible refers to as green pastures. That's what we refer to as green pastures. So what does a shepherd do? The shepherd looks for a hillside that's either exposed to the wind or exposed to a small amount of rain. And, and then they get to this place and the sheep are there and it's kind of like a mouthful here and then take a step and then another mouthful there and take another step or two, another mouthful here and then take another, another step. And so for David, green pastures doesn't mean rolling hills of carpeted grass. Green pastures for a shepherd meant a place where he could meet the needs of the sheep. Nothing more, nothing less. And the funny thing is, that's all the sheep need. They're cool with that. <laughs> it's all very simple. It's all very simple. This psalm is, this psalm is very simple. You know, I, I think the psalms, it's, I hesitate to uh, break down the psalms because it's almost like taking a delicate flower and picking apart each of its petals and then analyzing each petal. You know what I mean? It's all very simple. And even though that's what we're doing, I, the, the point of this is very simple. That, that all we need is God and that he's going to lead us. I think in this time of COVID, God has allowed us to reevaluate what we really need in life. What's actually important, you know? That maybe we ought to simplify the way that we live. Maybe we actually don't need this or that. Maybe Maybe we can just be content with what we have and be okay with that. Sheep were cool with it. They didn't need the grandeur. They didn't need the extra. They were content with receiving what they needed. Is that you? Is that your heart? Are you content with what you have? In the desert, you will learn that the shepherd 
will get you what you need for right now. 10 minutes from now, you trust the shepherd. 20 minutes, you trust the shepherd. He's got your back. The green pastures and quiet waters are the Lord giving you and me what we need. So verse 3 says the shepherd provides. He says he refre- it says he refreshes my soul and he guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Other translations of verse 3 say that he restores my soul. He renews my strength. He brings back my soul. He restores me. You guys ever remember when we didn't have phones to like get around and we had to use like actual maps to get to places when we drove anywhere? I mean, I don't really remember it, thank God. Um, But I remember growing up and in our family's car, we would have this gigantic book. I don't even remember what it's called. If you remember what it's called, you can type it in the chat for everybody else. But it was just straight up maps of the roads and the freeways in Southern California. And if you've ever been to Southern California, it is a convoluted hot mess of freeways and streets. Um, There's about 40,000 highways, and it's like you're doing arithmetic from getting to LA, from the LA to the Inland Empire. You're like, okay, I'm gonna take the 405 South to the uh, 57 North and then the 10 East and the 210 East and then I'm gonna do a barrel roll and, and, and all that stuff. It's crazy, like, it doesn't make it. And if you didn't have a map, you were like, good luck. Like, you, there's no way you're getting wherever you needed to get. You'd get completely lost. And I remember if you missed your exit, like, no, 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 you, you missed it, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, if you missed your exit, you didn't have a map, you didn't know where, you were done. Dude. Uh, one wrong move and, and you, were, you were lost, one wrong turn, one missed exit, and you were, you were lost. And if, and if you're like me, you, didn't wanna con, you don't want to consult anyone, and so you want to figure it out, you just get more and more and more lost. It's one of the worst feelings in the world to feel lost, isn't it? To feel directionless. You know, every night the shepherd would count his or her sheep, and, and when a single sheep would go missing, that shepherd would set out and leave all the others to, to find that one he would go out, find the sheep, and, and restore them to the flock. <laughs> I, I, sheep are dumb. <laughs> I am a sheep. Um, it's no wonder that the Bible compares us as humans to sheep over 200 times. It, it, it's because we're exactly like them. Isaiah 53 says in verse 6, We all have wandered away like sheep. Each of us has gone his own way. Do any of you feel lost, perhaps even right now? How many of you feel lost watching right now? How many of us feel lost in life? How many of us feel lost in our spirituality? Have you, have you ever felt like you've wandered too far away from God? You, have you ever felt ashamed that you don't want to ask for help anymore? You're just going to keep trying to navigate and get more and more, more lost? Do you ever feel so ashamed that you think that God wouldn't want to bring you back or would want you anymore? I I felt that way. And I want to remind us of a scripture in Luke 15, verse 4. It says, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friend and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. And I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. We have a shepherd, and he will find you. He will retrieve you. He will seek you out, and he will not quit until he sees you back with the flock safe and sound. Trust in the shepherd, guys. Come back to the shepherd. Let him lead you. And you know, the thing about the way, the way that David is describing the shepherd and how we think about Jesus as the shepherd in our life today, I mean, I, I just think I can follow that guy, you know? <laughs> I think about all these religious figures. I think about all these great leaders in history. And, and some were all right. Some were horrible. Some were pretty good. But there is only one. There's one that stands head and shoulders above the rest who is incomparable. Because there's only one who throws himself into danger for me. There is only one who suffered for my sake. 
There's only one who sacrificed his life for me and for you, and that is Jesus. And he is calling us to follow him. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, the Bible reads, To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray. But now you have returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. Jesus leads the way so that you and I would follow. And he will always come looking for you if you've wandered away. He says, come on back. Come on. Come on back because I'm going places. And I want you to come with me. All right, Jesus, where are we going? All right, verse 4 says, even though I walk Through the darkest valley, (laughs) I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. All right, cool. So I guess we're going into the dark. Sounds nice. Other translations of this scripture say that he's, that we're walking, that he's walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Nice. That sounds great. I like that. No, I don't. I mean, I hate the dark. Growing up, I was that one kid that would like always have his head on a swivel if it was dark around, you know? Eyes wide, I would see something and I'd be like, oh, something was there, and I would like jump and freak out. That was me, I'm I'm scared of the dark. I I was scared, not currently scared, yeah. But what's incredible to me here is is the fact that, that the sheep are not taken around the valley, yeah? They're not taken over the valley. They're not flown over the valley. They're not, they're not taken around it. They're taken through the valley. Because God never promised us a life that would be without valleys or hardship, right? And in fact, he promises hardship and trouble in our life on account of him, actually. But I do want us to notice that we're taken through the valley. That means and implies that, that these times are not permanent. These valleys are not permanent either. Going through the valley means that we come out on the other side. That there are moments in our life that may seem the darkest, but we can be assured that they will not last forever. And so we have to, and it's so hard to understand, but we have to try to understand that sometimes the hardest moments in our lives are the greatest opportunities for God to be glorified. And that's what the last verse says, right? He says that he guides me along right paths for his name's sake, for for his glory, for, for his praise. And it's not my job to understand the inner workings of God and the universe in which he controls with the palm of his hand. That's what Isaiah 55, 8 through 9 says. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and so my thoughts than your thoughts. I I mean, I I may not understand what God is doing all the time, but hey, I'm not the one running the entire universe. (laughs) I'm just a sheep. I'm a sheep. And everyone is going to go through valleys in their life. But here's the thing. Not everybody has a shepherd. And right now, I want you to be grateful. I just want us to be that that much more grateful that we have a shepherd to lead us through these times. I think we need to have a lot more faith in our life than fear. Because it's easy to fear the valleys. Easy to to fear these times. You know, I, um, I play video games with my wife. You know, and before you judge me, before you judge me, couples have things that they like to do, right? They watch movies, they take walks, they play sports. Shelly and I like to uh, play video games, and we specifically play a game called Fortnite together. Um, And we play the game really differently. I'm like super competitive, and she's more like, la-di-da-di-da, like that character's pretty, like really cool. You know, she likes the scenery and stuff like that, and I'm like, 
mechanically, I'm like trying to be the best and destroy everyone else around me. So when we play, it's kind of like a, <laughs> it's kind of like a clashing. And the, the goal of the game is to eliminate everybody else basically. And so, um, yeah, I'm extremely competitive. And so the game works on an algorithm where um, if you party up with somebody, uh, they pair you against other people of your level. And they always take the guy who is the highest level on your team and then they pair them with other high level people. So basically I'm a high level and uh, we play with a couple friends and Shelly will come and play with us sometimes and she's, again, she just plays the game differently. Um, but there's one thing about the way that she plays that I love and <laughs> and it separates her from the rest of us. And it's and it's all guys, right? And so all of our all of us, we we play the game strategically, and then we, we see a player over there, and we're like, okay, guys, we're like contemplating, what do we do? Like, how how do we play this out? Like, I don't know, I'm kind of nervous. I don't have enough supplies. I don't have enough ammo. Blah blah blah. And, and, and we're like, what do we do? And there's like a little bit of a silence, and then all you hear from the other side of the, of the comms, you hear Shelly, and she goes, no fear. <laughs> and she goes, no fear, and like, and it, it, it like inspires us, right? Because you know, you know, she's not amazing at the game yet. She's like, no fear, let's go. And so all of us are like, yeah, let's do it. And so we like start charging the enemy, and like, we got this, we can do this. And and I love it. She goes, no fear, and all of us are like, no fear. And. and and I love this because it's kind of like what we see with David. You see, David got this. He may not have known where he was going. He, he may not have had control over what was happening. I guarantee you he didn't know everything that was going to come next. But he wasn't about to let his circumstance separate him from his shepherd. No fear. And I love it. It's like the... The more that I read Psalm 23, the more I hear it as kind of like a battle cry. It's like, it's like for David, it's like this, like, okay, then come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. Like he's got that kind of a mentality. It's like, oh, I wish you would try to mess with me. Bah, like, I wish you would because I've got my shepherd. And even if people do attack, what does David say is going to happen in verse 5? Verse 5 says, you prepare a table for me, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. David says, no one's going to mess with him. He's like, I'm not afraid of you. What if all my enemies show up? Then my shepherd is going to prepare a table for me and I'm just going to chill and eat and my shepherd's just going to take everybody out. I'm going to kick my feet up. I'm going to relax because my shepherd's got it. He's going to John Wick anybody that tries to get me. That's just who my shepherd is. No one's going to harm me. Nothing is going to harm me. And in fact, he's like, Dude, I got too much here. My cup is overflowing. I got too much. You want some? I got some. I'll share it with you. He's got more than he needs in his life because he's got his shepherd. Guys, this is, this is true peace. This is true faith. Dave is just eating popcorn and enjoying the show. Verse 6 says, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word here, follow, literally means to pursue. Surely your goodness and love will pursue me all the days of my life. But wait, I thought I, thought I was being led. Well, yeah, yeah, you are. Jesus is in front of you. He's behind you. And he's beside you. He's leading you. He's walking with you, and he's got your back. That's what's up, dude. He's like, we're spiritually fortified on every side. Spiritually fortified. Not physically fortified necessarily, but spiritually fortified. And let's be honest, that's what matters the most. And Jesus says it the best in John 10 as we close here. John 10 verse 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me. And I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. 
They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. I mean, that is just incredible. What kind of security do you have in God right now? I encourage you to reread Psalm 23 to figure it out. I feel like every time I read it, I just get something different out of it. And there was so much more that we could have talked about, but that's for us to find out. That's for you to find out on your own time in your own relationship with God. And I love this. I love this about my Savior Jesus because I am a sheep. I am defenseless. I'm a sheep. And I'm dirty. I'm a sheep and I'm, I'm pretty dumb. I'm a sheep and I'm prone to wander. But I'm proud to be a sheep because I've got my shepherd in Jesus. And I find rest in my shepherd. I find peace in my shepherd. I fear nothing because of my shepherd. And he is everything that I could ask for. He is the one that I listen to. He is the one that leads me. And he is all that I need in life. And I am a sheep. Thank you guys so much. God bless.